answers to this pressing question. Is the housing market really going to crash? Today on the Wandering But Not Lost podcast. Welcome to Wandering But Not Lost, your online source for finding balance so that you can align, connect, and prosper. I'm living right here and now and I don't want to miss out. Is this what life's all about? The world is calling and I'm listening. Yeah, I'm listening. And now your hosts, Jen O'Brien and Matt Emerson. Well, hello, everyone, and welcome to the WBNL Wanderman Out Lost podcast, where real estate and uh, reality, that's what it is, meet. This is episode 168. You can find all of our show notes over at WBNLpodcast.com. Dan Brian, that is the question. I think that's on a lot of people's minds for crying out loud. What is happening? Because everyone knows it's crazy out there. It is. And so, you know what? I'm going to share five reasons why, backed up by some statistics, graphs, charts, and what the experts are saying as to why I do not believe the housing market is going to crash. It's not like the last time during the Great Recession. And better yet, we're going to introduce and invite you to take the June SOI Challenge. That's what we're covering today. But first, I've got to have a little more coffee because... I don't know how much more hockey I can watch. <laughs> well, right apparently now. not much more. Hmm. It's, we're not up, down and out yet. My Las Vegas uh, Golden Knights are down 2-0. It was a valiant effort last night in Colorado. Shout out to all you Colorado Abs fan. They are tough, man. It's going to be amazing if they can beat them. This is uh, quite a series. And I'm also watching Tampa Lightning, because that's my new hometown. And my original is Boston. You know, the Boston Bruins are also winning, and so is Tampa, but my my, my Lightning, I mean, my uh, Golden Knights are not winning. And here's the bad part, Matt. The games are on at 10 o'clock out here because yeah. it's West Coast. You know, they're on at 7 West Coast, and it was, I'm feeling it today. The, the fortunate thing for you, Jan, is since you've lived all over the country, you can just pick a team anywhere you are. You don't just pick teams, as you well know. You know, Jan O'Brien, about four years ago, it was either four years, I think it was four years ago. I was trying to make it three, but I forgot we lost last year. So it was four years ago. We went to Disneyland um, for your birthday. Tomorrow is Jan O'Brien's birthday. And we went to Disneyland for uh, her birthday. Had a really pretty incredible time. We podcast that day from the adventure in the park and bowling and all kinds of stuff. We'll actually put a link to that in the show notes too. Um, <laughs> a great episode. I bring that up only because Jan was obsessing about the damn hockey then. I think what weren't the, wasn't the World Series going on then? It's not the World oh, Series. Oh, that's right. It's not called the, the World Series. I'm it's sorry. the Stanley Cup, and I am that's having flashbacks fine. to watching it, making you put it on while we were bowling. It was hysterical. And I was a little crazy because they were losing yeah. in that game also. They were indeed. All right. Well, they have now, listen, as an expansion team, this is their fourth year in existence, and all four years they've gone to the playoffs. Year one, they went to the Stanley Cup right. and lose to the stupid Washington Capitals. And they've gone each other time, you know, two rounds and then one round. They were the Sharks beat them and uh, Dallas Stars beat them last year. And right now they're battling it out with Colorado. But you know what? I'm going to hang in there. It's so exciting to watch it. It really is super. And the neighbors here, they've got their Tampa Bay Lightning flags flying and it's awesome. So anyway, I digress because we really do need to talk about real estate, don't you think? Uh, <laughs> You're listening to the Wandering But Not Lost podcast. Join us and subscribe on Apple Podcasts, Spotify, Stitcher, iHeartRadio, Google Podcasts, tune in, and you can watch us on YouTube. Well, let's let's dive into this because this is so much coming up. Every time I talk to anyone I'm coaching or working on, and it just amazes me how it's not difficult, in my opinion, to do a few things so that you have a great reason to reach out to people that you know. And by that, I mean, just be the student, be the student of what's happening in your chosen industry, which if you're a real estate professional and you're listening, it happens to be real estate. Yeah, so huh. You really have to be able to have conversations and it's okay to share your opinion and back it up. But yeah. honestly, it's just being a student and honest. And the, the thing I'm going to share that we say all the time where I get my number one place that I get the information is keeping current matters. 
So keeping current matters, if you're not using it, you can check out a free trial, 14 days. We've got an affiliate link and full disclosure, the affiliate link basically lets us have a month free if you sign up, but it also gets you a $25 gift card if you sign up. And I think it costs $30 a month, $29.99. Yeah, that's um, it. It, it. Of all the years I've been doing this, Matt, I use that thing all the time. I love it for the blog posts, but I love it mostly for the monthly market updates where David Childers uh, and the team over there put together a 30 minute presentation, 20, 30 minute presentation where they just talk to us as realtors and say, here's all the graphs and charts. Here's the script. Here's everything that it means. And here's what you ought to be talking to your clients about. They yeah. give it to you. All you have to do is take out what you want. And then they do these deep dives every Monday where they take like one chart or three charts and say, here's something right here that you could go do. So they're spoon feeding it to you. And all you have to do is just dive in and go with it and stop winging it. Now, I, I say all this because what's on everybody's mind right now is all the channels, all the news channels and online is the housing market's going to crash. Is That's there a right. bubble? Everyone's talking about it. Everyone's Googling it. And it's causing so much angst on top of the pandemic, which caused most of this uh, inventory issue right now. So let's jump in and talk about uh, these charts. And then I want to go through what I'm going to, how to, to leverage this knowledge. And we're going to give this to you. Okay. We're going to give you and share the, the keeping current matters. You can take the article I created from their stuff and I added my opinion to it. You can take it as is, if you want to, I really encourage you to, because it's really, it can make such a difference because we're going to share with you an easy way to uh, text and reach out to people that you know, because you have people in your database right now, right now, June 3rd, as we record this, that are thinking about putting their home on the market. And it's going to be super sad for you if they don't call you. Yeah, you better get ahead of it. Don't assume that people are going to call you. If you haven't been doing a great job staying in touch with them, they may not. They may think you're out of business. You're busy. You're too busy for them. And if you haven't checked in with people in a long while and, and the reason you're procrastinating, so listen to me, those of you that are procrastinating because, oh, I feel embarrassed. I haven't talked to anybody in a year. It's okay. You're going to find that people do want to chat with you. And if somebody goes, you haven't stayed in touch with me for a year, you know, screw you. Okay. Next. Okay. I had a client say that, and it was just one person who did that. And when we dug in deeper, um, most of the people, majority of the people were like, Oh, so glad to hear from you. And the, the one person that had something negative to say sort of traumatized the agent to not do it. And so For you crying out loud, people are in dire need of communication right now. Right? So it's so, probably better now so than ever. So uh, let's go through these these um stats okay so the first the first thing the first image that i really recommend that you use you put on social or you you and if you're listening go to the show notes you'll get these you can get these images and if or go to our youtube channel and you can see the video version of all this uh, and this is just this is a, these are all from keeping current matters okay so this is a great little graphic that says are we in a housing bubble and according to NAR chief economist Lawrence Yoon, who's been the economist for NAR forever, as long as I can remember, it is not a, bumble, a bubble. It's not a bubble either. It's not a bubble. It is simply a lack of supply. This is a really great, simple way to start a conversation. This is not a housing bubble. It is something different. And so let's take a little back step and talk a little bit more again about how do we get here, right? So we have epic low inventory across the country, coupled with pent up buyer demand because of a lot of things, people wanting to move and do things. The interest rates are still low and a lot of reasons people want to move, but there's no inventory. And this is what's causing this out of control price appreciation, inflated price appreciation, which is why I think some people, because we were around, you and I, Matt, were around in the in the um, gotcha. Great Recession and the, all the foreclosure and short sale crisis. And this is what this is the memory, the memory that goes back to say, oh my gosh, remember when things were appreciating too fast, and that's what caused the bubble. Well, what really caused the bubble is yes, things were appreciating too fast because of the demand, but it's also had to do with a lot of bad product that was yeah. out there from the mortgages. Exactly, and people were upside down in their houses, and all of a sudden there was you know, people had no equity. They were upside down like 50%. It was crazy. It was out of control. Investors were swarming in markets like Las Vegas and here in Florida, 
all around the country, but those in particular were big ones, Texas, five or six major centers, epicenters of all the foreclosures in yep. California as well. There were places. So we have a different scenario now, but let's talk about how did we get to this problem of low inventory over this past year? Well, it's called COVID-19. It's a oh. thing called a health concern and pandemic. Never heard and, of it. And honestly, this is what, you know, obviously it was the concern about jobs, COVID uncertainty with the economy back a year ago that caused people to say, we're going to stay put. If we were thinking the only people that ended up now we sold houses. I know agents who had their best years ever because they kept working. Well, things still happen. People get transferred, people die, things happen. They have to move. Those were the people that were selling and buying houses. Okay. But the majority of people sat on the fence. Okay. Uh, so, so why do we think it's starting to get better? Well, vaccinations. What are we up to right now? 62.7% of Americans are fully vaccinated. Holy mackerel. We're going to hit this uh, 70%. Yeah, excuse me, have at now. least one shot. Yeah, they, they really do believe in the next, uh, uh, there's only 16 million more people need to be vaccinated before the 4th of July to be 70%. You know, only in America do we have to do things like I saw something on Twitter yesterday that says Anheuser-Busch is offering free alcohol. If Wait. If we I, hit the 70% by July 4th. First of all, I think that's awesome. But I doubt if that would only happen in America because we are a pretty drunky company, a country, but I know a few other countries that probably might be a little I bit I know, but we're bribing Americans with things like uh, you get a wine day or you get a free pass to the state hey, park. All I know is on the 15th of June in California, everyone that's had vaccinations is thrown into the lottery. And we, I'm going to be sitting here waiting for my million dollars. Thank you very much. Oh, there's a lottery also in California? Yeah, they're giving away 15 million bucks uh, uh, to 15 people. Well, the pot is 15 million and they're going to draw 15 names. So everyone gets a million bucks. Holy crap. That's pr I didn't even know about that. I knew about it in another state like Ohio or someplace. But you know what? Whatever it takes, it's working. And, and this is impacting everything. This is going to impact the economy. Now, there's some interesting things that are going to happen, right? There's unemployment concerns, economic, you know, we've got a whole nother level of issues with there's jobs and people don't want them because they're not paying well enough and people need to go get, you know, want to update their skills. And yep. the next new thing is, hey, businesses pay the workers, you know, more money. That'll all change a little bit too. I think jobs will get better when uh, the unemployment additional, you know, uh, payments in September run out. But it, it's all this sense of, you know, it, it. This is it. We're a pack mentality where where it becomes. Do we all collectively feel that things are going to get better? And this, I'm just speaking not politically. I'm speaking on what I think is going to happen just from studying this and my experience of all of this. And I just feel that as people start to feel more comfortable, this is why we are here. But I'm also talking about why is it going to start happening that maybe more homes come on the market? And I think it has a lot to do with all these things I'm mentioning. So the, the economy recovering and things getting better there, of course, can increase the interest rates. So and, and it could start inflation to go up a little bit, which then might have people. So there's so many dynamic factors that maybe some people are saying, well, wait a minute, maybe I'm not going to buy a house. These are all the arguments you'll start hearing from the all the different experts. But right now. I think if people start to put their homes on the market because they feel comfortable, because they're ready to go buy the house that they really want, it'll be like, oh, the Jones are putting their homes on the market. Like, just think of all the little neighborhoods across America. This is my prediction. And people start to, they start to see their neighbors putting their homes on the market. They start to feel comfortable with it. That's what I'm saying when I say we have a bit of a, what's that, what, you know, let's do what the other people are doing. Do you agree with that? I totally agree with that. And there's a, there's a whole other part of that that I think that people just, you know, they don't like change in the first place, right? And they don't want their neighborhood to change. There's a lot of things that fall into that bucket as far as, you know, motivation to move. So it's interesting. So all that's happening. That's part of what caused all this people staying on the, keeping their home and sitting on the fence until things are better. Well, guess what? Things are starting to get better. Thus, I think we're going to see more homes come on the market. Now, the good news and why part of this is not, you know, why this whole conversation today is, why we're not going to have this crisis of too much inventory. I'll, I'll back that up with some stats and graphs in a bit here. But the bottom line is there's so much need and desire for homes that if more homes come on the market, people are going to buy them. We're just not going to have 30 offers on a house. Maybe they'll yep. become 10 and five. And now it's not going to be, sellers aren't going to be able to get $30,000 over appraised value in the coming months, in my humble opinion. No, I totally agree with that. Okay. And sellers really need to be listening to this because this is a huge deal right now because they feel so empowered and so in control and they are not going to be.
And if you're a seller and you happen to be listening to us, this is what we're trying to say. We're not trying to make you go sell your house. Mm -hmm. We're saying if you're wanting to be able to max out at the top of the market, you're not going to know when the top of the market is until after we're past 30 That's days right. past the top of the market. So it's a bit of taking a gamble. And if you're not a risk taker, you wait. If you're if you're like most sellers and, and I count all of us listening, we own homes, you know, we're not moving because where are we going to go? So we've already talked about that on another podcast, but that's the issue. You're not going to be able to wait later and get 20. Th so we're going to, as realtors, we're going to have to go through educating the sellers again to say, yeah, that was two months ago when you could get 20 or 30,000 over appraised value. Now we have more houses. Now you have to be priced really right. Now you're not a hundred, you're still in charge because it's not going to switch to a buyer's market anytime right. soon. Yeah, exactly. So we're going to have to make these adjustments. A couple of the things that got us here that are going to continue to keep us here through the end of the year and it's starting to get a little bit better is the mortgage forbearance and the tenant eviction extensions through June. If they don't get extended, we have to pay attention to what happens in government, what's going on, because eventually this has to get handled. And I personally believe there are a lot of investors that may have tenants in their home that they can evict right now. And when yep. they're able to do that, if they have people that haven't made payments or worked it out with them, they may want to sell their house and cash out at the top of the market. They're investors after all. Yep. And, and if they do believe the market, the prices are going to come down, wait it out a little bit and go buy something else or get in and go buy. That's going to add to more inventory. So sellers are going to decide to go do it. I think, moratoriums get lifted, more people decide that maybe I should go sell my house because maybe I still have some equity and I don't want to short sell my house. Investors might want to set all this can start happening, right? Yeah, I know a few uh, people that um, have investment property and they're thinking about making some, uh, doing some selling off of their, some of their, uh, their rentals because it's like, you know, who would have thought? And a lot of people are thinking, you know, this is the first wave of something that might be more common in the world over the next, you know, <laughs> well, for the rest of history, right? So um, it's interesting. Everyone's rethinking their real estate um, strategies. And then honestly, we've got uh, another uh, factor that I just found staggering when I got this from Keeping Current Matters. Uh, I knew that were issues with building, but there's a chart that I'm looking at right now for all our podcast audio listeners that shows uh, decades, you know, uh, comparing certain decades. And the, in a nutshell, I just want to compare 2000 to 2009 there were 12.6 million single family housing units completed in that decade by builders, brand new construction. Compare that to the last decade, 2010 to 2019, it was half, it was six point little more than half, 6.5 million. Now that is a decade of builders slowing down, not keeping that same record pace and a combination of things recently of high cost of, of supplies, lumber, building supplies, labor issues, and all of that. But there's a there's a quote that we, you know, that we have that says this is one of the biggest reasons, this deficit of single family homes being built by, you know, new home construction companies around the country has, even if we didn't have a pandemic, we would have had less inventory because of that one point. So I find this all interesting. So the bottom line is we had low inventory. Is it going to get better? Yeah, I think so. When, as all those things start that we just talked about start happening and people still feel comfortable about going ahead and selling and looking and it's a catch 22, isn't it? If, if they're the majority of the sellers are like, well, I'm going to wait until there's more houses on the market, then they're going to get back into the market where they can't get what they wanted for their house. Now you can't have it all. And this is what we have to help our sellers understand. You can't get 20, 30,000 over appraised value and then turn around and get a deal on the next house. So it's a timing thing. It's a risk thing, but I just think more and more people are because of the economy, because of the vaccinations and, and COVID and things opening up, you know, are feeling okay. Now I'll have to tell you, Matt, I don't know how you feel, but I don't think just because everything's opening up, the majority of people are like, there are a group of people that are like, woohoo, let's go. And then there's a bunch of people that are saying, you know what, I'm not so sure I'm ready to jump in and go into, uh, you know, crowds and concerts and sporting events where people aren't wearing masks. And, uh, you know, I just think it's going to take a while. What do you think? Yeah, it's gonna, I think it's going to be a slow burn on that. Absolutely. People, you know, and I think it should be that way. I think everyone needs to find their comfort level before they run out there. Yeah. I, I so I kind of feel because, you yeah. know, there's part of you going, what about the variants? And then, there, the, you know, what if it happens again? It's so intriguing what's in, in our psyche now, right? To your point earlier of mm -hmm. could this happen again, or is it a once in a hundred year thing that happens? Well. Nobody knows, right? All right, so let's go through quickly these five reasons why 
that it's not like the last time and why I personally believe in, in studying this and why the majority of the experts out there are all saying it's a supply issue. We're not having a, a housing bubble. Number one, the inventory levels in the months of supply comparison. So we there's a chart that we have here from Keeping Current Matters that shows uh, you know, years of the ups and downs of inventory and just how drastically low it is right yeah. now. And months of supply is when this chart was was put up a couple month or so ago was about nationally two months of supply, which simply means if all if the demand remained and no more houses came on the market, it would take two months for what was in the inventory to get bought up. Okay, that's what that that's a, a metric that we we follow. In uh, out in Vegas, it's like two weeks. It's less than that in Fort Myers. I'll tell you that. I was looking at my cousins. You know, they've been approached by a lot of people. I've been looking around our neighborhood. They, like within a mile of their house, there's like two houses on the market. It's, it's crazy. crazy. I know. And and and, so, and it's going to be like that until I can't predict exactly when. I personally feel it's about the fall. I think by the fall, we'll start seeing more and more people feeling more comfortable. Yeah, I think so too. Intriguing. But I don't know. We're just well, you know what? I think a lot of it has to tie in with school as well, because, you know, just classically, you know, towards the end of summer, you know, people are getting moved before school, the school years start and all of that type of stuff. And I think, you know, there might be still be some of that residual. So it might happen before fall. I think it's going to start ticking up towards the end of summer. So let's compare, maybe by the end of summer, right? compare, yeah. let's, so this chart I'm showing now compares the months of inventory leading up to the great recession. So, it shows 2004, five, six, seven, and it shows, you know, 3.9 uh, on average for the year of months of supply to five to 6.4 to all of a sudden 9.6 in 2007. And that's when all these houses flooded the market. And this is what a lot of people are thinking. If there becomes a flood of uh, homes on the market, that's going to cause the prices to go down because yep. there's not enough buyer demand. And this is where I think it's different. So now we're going to compare it to the last four years leading up to where we are now. And the months of inventory, we're in up around nine, uh, nine months of inventory, which is a buyer's market. It was been a strong seller's market. We've consistently had a strong seller's market for the last since 2017, four months of inventory, anything under six months of inventory is a seller's market. It's an extreme seller's market. Yeah. Then, we get, then we get into a neutral market, kind of between five and six and seven. And then anything over six is a buyer's market. So four, 3.7, 2019, three, down to 2020. On average, it was 2.1. The first part of this year, it's lower. It's under one. Okay. So totally different statistic right there comparing the housing crash of the last time, which is what's in everybody's mind. Number two, home price appreciation comparison. So I'm looking at a chart right now, and this chart has in the red area, which is, again, the time leading up to the uh, when things started to crash, uh, the average annual appreciation was about 10%. Now, uh, for that four-year four, four year time period, which was crazy, that's what everybody was saying. It was going up too fast. Now, we had that happen last year. Last year, because of the epic low inventory and the high demand, it was about 10% across the country. However, if you look at the previous years, it was normal. 4.7, 4.8, 6.4 compared to 12, 8, and 8 from the previous years you know, leading up to the crash of 2006, 2007. All right. So totally different. You know, appreciation. We're going to maybe have another year. Well, I'm gonna sh uh, there, I actually have a chart. I don't think it's in here of uh, maybe it is. Let me let me see if it's coming. Uh, it may not. But in the article that I wrote, I wrote from Keeping Current Matters, it's showing where appreciation is going to continue. And some people are saying it could be as high as nine percent, like uh, the Mortgage Bankers Association says that. And CoreLogic says it's going to be under three. Yeah. So for the year of 2021. OK, so that's reason number two. It's totally different appreciation rates and it's inflated now because of the low uh, inventory and inventory comes on. I still think we have enough demand to eat it up is my point. Um, and that's healthy. Let's go from one back to a three or four. Yeah, no back, kidding. Okay? That's exactly right. Number Reason number three, we're not having a crash is majority of homeowners in the country have significant equity. Not everyone, but the majority of them do. And on average in 2020 in the U S the average person who has a mortgage got a, you know, or, doesn't have to have a mortgage, just got aimed a uh, gain $26,300 extra in equity on average. 
Now it varies, and we, there's a cool chart from Keeping Current Matters that shows what it was by state. Look at California, 55,000 was the average equity gain for a homeowner average. Down in Florida, 19,000. Out in uh, Nevada, about 21,000. So this is way cool, right? You can, and now the bottom line is you can get into all the stats about the people that are in forbearance. And studying this for month after month, there's about 15, 16% of all the people that had a forbearance, majority of them have caught up, sold their house. They're all good. They took it because they maybe didn't even need it. But there is about 16% of people that have the forbearance still that have to figure it out. Okay, so that's not going to lead to 70% of the homes like we had in Vegas that are in upside down. And of that 16%, some of those people still have equity. Yeah. Right now, they're eating up their equity if they haven't made a mortgage payment for a year plus. They're, they may not have much left. And this is why I think ultimately people will put their house on the market and get what they can if they have to when that when those moratoriums are lifted. That's why I believe some more uh, inventory is going to come on the market. So that's n reason number three. And then number four is the interest rates are expected to rise over the next year. Now, and I, I bring this up because there'll still be a demand, you know, that'll get some people to maybe go ahead and continue to buy because they're worried about it continuing to go up. So that worry about too much supply, not enough buyers causing the prices to come down. I just don't, I just don't see it there. So the, there's a historical chart showing fr from 2020, uh, how the rates, you know, this is just 3.7, how they dip down below three, you know, two, 2.7, 2. 2. point whatever. And they're right around at the time of this 2.98, but the projections are here is a chart I'm showing that has the Freddie Fannie, the mortgage bankers association, national association of realtors, all showing through uh, third quarter 2021 through second quarter 2022, on average, they're all blended averages 3.3 to 3.6. Okay, yeah, that's almost a non-issue. Come on, man. We can, if it's anything under four or five percent, we're still in good shape. But it does, after a year or two of being in the threes and fours, this will get people to maybe make that move. But it's still good, right? Still good interest rates, so it keeps the demand up. And the last reason is home prices. Home prices, here we go. I knew we were going to get to this. Home prices also projected to continue to rise, not decline. That's what happened the last time around. How People bought a house for 400000 and all of a sudden it's worth two hundred and fifty. People bought a house for 400000 owed 450000 and then it was worth three fifty. That's exactly right. Okay, so yeah. this chart shows... Uh, from everybody from Fannie, Freddie, you know, NAR, Realtor.com, CoreLogic, the average of all the economists forecasting home price appreciation in 2021 to be 6.8%. Yeah. Back in that healthy range, because we're going to make this adjustment from 10 and 12 and year over year right now in a lot of states that I study, you know, uh, March over March, 15% increase, meaning... Yeah. If you sold your house in March, you got 15% more than you would have a year you know, earlier. Uh, so crazy stuff, but it's because of no inventory and because of these you know, crazy uh, people wanting to buy the houses and willing to pay whatever it takes to get the house. That can't keep up forever. We just talked about why. Uh, but these are all excellent reasons to, to get up to speed. And if, if you're not comfortable talking about it like Matt and I just did, you have to be a student of it of it and you need to start now. And so besides keeping current matters, and we have a link to get our little affiliate thing in the uh, show notes. Um, and it doesn't even matter if you don't want to use the affiliate, it's no big deal. It, it just go get it. Okay. Because you're going to enjoy it. Um, but if you do use the, if you do use our affiliate link, you get 25 bucks, you practically get your first ones free. And then and for all Lock, those of you that watch the video, uh, and if you go to the show notes and see the graphs, it's 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 impressive stuff. And there, it, it, those are conversation starters. You know what I'm saying? Here's the thing: I want you need to. I have to tell you, I had a conversation with someone the other day regarding it was a seller talking about just the whole process. And it's just funny, even if you bought and sold a thousand homes, how weird you get when it cut you like lose your mind when you're getting ready to buy or sell because you just i don't know why you cannot wear both shoes but most people cannot do it 
And it is such an interesting conversation to have with people to try to get them to understand that you can't have it both ways, like you were talking about, Jan. You know what I'm saying? It's like you can't buy yeah, high, yeah. high and buy you know really low. It doesn't work that way. It requires time. counsel. Okay. But here's the thing I was going to say though. What you need to do when you're talking to someone because you have the information, you've got it all right there. You need to listen to what they're talking about, and as you listen to them, you'll find out the thread of what they're what they're hot point is right and then you can just bring up a graph and talk about it or that's or right. talk to a point that's going to really right. say to try to really just slowly educate because i think that's really what it's all about it's now, scary and i know we're going a little long on this podcast today but i think this is so critical that i i, I was just going to share this june soi challenge but if i didn't give you this background and maybe for those of you that listen just get some confidence about what to say now i'm going to show you the action items to take. All right. So the very first thing is this, I'm calling this the June sphere of influence challenge. And the idea here is we've shared this throughout the pandemic. I just shared it recently again about another way to check in and you know, everybody, all the coaches out there, everyone's talking the same thing. This is not a new idea. Uh, I heard, I got this idea from paperless agents. So shout out to those guys. They're awesome. And I liked a, a couple of the texts they had, and I just kind of took that idea and, implemented it in our my way uh and you know just various things that i've heard because it's just brilliant so if you so my my thing to you is i want you to reach out to the people in your database that you know and then between now and the end of june via a text which we're going to share at the text that we adapted or a call but you got to do some action items first so i want to share with you first what you need to do and you need to create this blog post. Okay. So I took some articles from Keeping Current Matters, what I just shared with you. It's their content and they're all about you use their content, which is just freaking awesome. This is my uh, O'Brien Robbie team blog for Las Vegas. Here is the article. You'll recognize the, if you're viewing this, you'll recognize it, but here's all the language and all the things that are in there, right? And then you can go create uh, this blog post so you can get a link. This is what the key is. Bonus, go create a, a video of that if you're comfortable doing video. And in the show notes, I have a link to the latest market update I did for Vegas, which where I talked about why the housing market's not going to crash. So if you want to hear me talking to people about it and get comfortable with it, go do it. Go watch it. Go steal it. Go use the same information. All right. So that's step one have a reason to reach out to your people. And if you're not going to go write this article or be confident enough to share uh, this with clients because you're afraid they're going to, you know, ask you questions you don't know the answer to, number right. one, get over that. But yeah. if you're not ready, I don't, but don't, I don't want you to use that for an excuse. I'll give you another idea. You have to find another reason to reach out to your clients. So you're going to reach out to your clients. We're going to walk through this right now. You're going to reach out to your clients and check in with them. And you want to share something of value with them. So this is the idea that I have right now that I've been using with our team. The item of value is, is the market going to crash or not? And I'm going to tell you why it's not. Now, if you think it's going to crash and put your two cents in and back it yeah. up with information and so forth, right? All right. So here's another idea. And I just did this with my, my client, uh, Sharon, Sharon Brown. Shout out to Sharon Brown, who serves the D.C., Maryland, and Virginia area. If you know anybody in that area, she's an awesome real estate agent. She's taking the challenge with me because I'm modifying the challenge. And Matt, you know what? I'm going to see if you want to take the challenge because I'm going to do it around some other things. Yeah. Um, so anyway... Uh, she wants to do her I'm vaccinated party, okay, or her next client event. She always does client events. So she's going to create an event to, to you know, post-COVID, things opening up and so on. And I said, great, then do a save the date. Plan that. And then if you're not going to do this article thing, plan that. And this is the reason for you to reach out and get people to save the date. Maybe you create an invitation and you have it for someone and then you have a great reason to have conversations. Her clients love these socials she has. And it's, it's probably a brilliant idea. If you don't like the market stats idea, do the whole let's get together in July or August idea. Okay. Yeah. Um, you know, after the 4th of July or some event, right? So come up with a reason to reach out to your clients so you can check in share something with them, and then you can get to the question that we'll do. Okay, so that's number one. Get, find a reason to connect. This gave you two good ones. And then if you're going to use this text, I'm going to share the text template with you now. We'll put this in our show notes. Um, 
hold on. I uh, I have multiple screens open. <laughs> So this is, uh, I'm just going to read it really quick here. Uh, in, a, in a nutshell, it's a template that says, hey, Matt, it's been too long. Sad face, my fault. How are you? And then things are going well here. Been working on some cool resources to stay in touch with my clients and friends. Here's a recent blog post I put together about this market and whether or not we're headed for a crash. And you insert your link in the text. And then would you be willing to give me feedback on it? Well, it's great catching up. Let me know if I can be of any service. Now, clearly, you start the conversation and you do the back and forth with your client. But what we're giving you is the meat of what you have ready to send. Um, you know, and so then it could be, if it's not that, it could be the whole, uh, you know, uh, save the date. I'm going to have my first client party post pandemic. Right. And there's another one that just says it's been too long. It's been a crazy year. We recently had a client experience. Just don't know how much longer that market's going to last. Okay. Uh -huh. Or this market's going to last. And that's that whole sense of if you've been trying to cash out right now, now's the time. Cause I don't know. That's why I wrote this article. So all you're doing with this is reaching out to folks, checking in. How's it been? And spend, take total responsibility if you have not stayed in touch with them and say, totally my fault. Uh, here's what's been going on for me. And, and just chit chat with people, right? Now, what's going to happen is why I love the whole is the housing market going to crash is your people who own homes are thinking this. They are, absolutely. And you are, they're thinking it. And they're, go, they're one of the people that the increase in Google traffic was like KCM said 20 seven 26 thousand percent increase a couple months ago uh or even just a month ago 30 days ago i lose track of time uh, how many people are putting that into google when's the housing bubble gonna burst all right because that's what's on people's minds so you're gonna deal with it by saying yeah i keep getting this my clients are constantly asking me so i just broke down and wrote an article i did a blog post i did a video on it here it is tell me what you think what's your feedback love to get your feedback on it now you're going to get into a conversation. You know, we've been thinking of selling our house, so we're not going to do it now, but we're going to do it later. So the reason I want to challenge you to do this is you need to reconnect with people that you know. Yep, yep, there yep. are people in your database that are thinking of selling now, and there are probably others thinking of selling some point later, maybe next year, maybe at the end of the year, whatever the reason is. And if you haven't stayed in touch with them, now is the time you have great reasons to do it. I promise, promise, promise you, if you – Block out your time. So here's what I want you to do. If you have 100 people in your database, I just did this yesterday, and you can start on Monday. I'm going to give you today and tomorrow off if you happen to listen to this when it goes live. It goes live tomorrow, right, on the forum? Yeah, yeah today, later today or tomorrow, yep. And listen, if you're listening to this later, do the same thing. It doesn't have to be the month of June. You get the idea. That's right. But However, there's only so much time that this is going to work with the whole what's going on in the market. I think it's a few more months, but don't procrastinate. So if I have 100 people, I'm going to go with 20 working days that are left in June. What's 20 divided into 100, Matt? Five. Five. So basically what I want you to do is Monday through Friday, block out one hour, and you're going to make five contacts. That's it. Love five it. texts. Five calls, a combination. You know if your people like a call better than a text. I think the text is great because if people are working or whatever, you're checking in um, and you're having a conversation. And if you, you know, you can decide if you want to, hey, how's it going? And if they don't, if they don't give it enough time, if they don't respond, then you could come back with, hey, I just recently, you know, posted this because I keep getting so much information. I wanted to pass it on. You could modify that if you're not having a normal text, right? So just do it naturally for you. Customize it the way it works for you. Go do that. Schedule it every single day, Monday through Friday or five days a week. Knock it out. I promise you, if you made that commitment to yourself, you would get some business. You might get a referral. You'll get some future business. A hundred percent, I guarantee you. you will yeah, there's no way you can't, right? If you did it. Okay. If you have a hundred people, there's no way that you're not going to have it. If you have 50 people, I still think you're going to get business. Okay. You're going to get referrals. So do it now, get some business, connect with your people and build your pipeline for the future. That is all I have. You're listening to the Wandering But Not Lost podcast. Join us and subscribe on Apple Podcasts, Spotify, Stitcher, iHeartRadio, Google Podcasts, tune in, and you can watch us on YouTube. Um, 
I want to 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 talk about Avengers Campus at California's Adventure because I think it's awfully awesome that it is actually opening on your birthday. Oh my god, I saw a tweet on this in a bit a short video. It is the coolest damn best thing I've ever seen in my entire life. They did this grand opening celebration last time. Okay, here's let me just say they we live in Anaheim Hills, which is, you know, probably eight, ten miles from Disneyland. And we haven't heard fireworks in 15 months. Oh, wow. But they had a celebration, a little uh, kickoff celebration there last night. And we were sitting in the house last night about 8.30. I'm like, what the hell is this? And they had fireworks going on. So it was super cool. So Avengers Campus opens this this Friday. And I cannot wait to get there. And it looks like the coolest, uh, immersive, engaging place that they built, well, since Galaxy's Edge two years ago, right? And before that, Mars Lake. It's just this really awesome place. And, and it's built around this idea that the Avengers have put a campus in in three places in the, in the world. One in California, one in France, and one in Tokyo. Huh, very interesting that there's Disney theme parks in all three of those locations. Yes. But they have different campuses and they are actively recruiting new Avengers. They want you to come and learn how to be an Avenger and uh, to, to recruit you to help you uh, fight evil in the world. So the whole oh idea God. is all around that. Super cool. So they have a new ride at um, in California where uh, it's, uh, and all of the lands are gonna be different. So there's different things to experience in each one of these Avengers campus. None of them are gonna be the same. There's a, a new attraction called, let me get to it here, called Web Slingers, a Spider-Man adventure. And you get on the attraction and it is apparently just wicked new high tech uh, uh, technology where you're sitting in this vehicle and you've got, you know, 3D glasses on and you're watching a screen, but there are sensors. I, that, that capture all of the movement that's going on in the car. I forgot what the rate was. It was some incredible wow. rate. So you can literally go like this and you can sling webs at things ah. in the... So it's like playing a, um, a video game, but you're actually Spider-Man, right? You're actually- yeah, like virtual reality. Oh my God. It looks so wicked cool. Uh, what is like, D23? D23 is just a Disney fan club okay. uh, that uh, you can join and you can updates and special stuff and stuff like that. Anyway, so there's that. That's the new ride that's coming in. Of course, Guardians Galaxy is already there, which is one of the best rides in all of that's ever been created. So that's there. They have this uh, area called the Inner Sanctum with Doctor Strange. Oh, so wow. he puts on this show, but I've seen the technology where how he enters that door. Kind of, it's kind of hard to see, but this door behind him opens up. And you know how they transfer from different realms of that, you know, that circle, yeah. that, you know, little, yep. you know, uh, make the circle happen. Right. And open yeah. And he enters from a different, like from New York City, he enters through this, this time portal into California and he talks about you know, how to become, you know, more mindful and talks about the multiverse and all the stuff that's coming up. It's, it's wow. going to be very, very cool. And then the, this is wicked cool. The restaurant location in the park is called Pim's Test Kitchen. There's Spider-Man. Uh, Pim's Test Kitchen. I'm not sure if there's actually a, yeah. And in here they have like oversized and undersized food. So they have like giant uh, <laughs> pretzels. Uh, pretzels. And this one was the, the giant meat cake. Okay, this this plate is a gigantic spoon, so it's a big, huge spoon with a giant meatball in it. This little tiny fork, a little tiny meatball, and then you know pasta inside here. Uh, that's the Avengers, the Pim Nini. This one makes me made me howl. It's the it's the mini oversized chicken sandwich. Oh, look at that! That's funny. It's this huge bun. chicken, this huge chicken breast, right, with this little tiny spider bun on top of it. Okay, so that's so that's people could go in and see that this week. Starting tomorrow on your birthday. They're opening on your birthday. Really, it's just because it's your birthday is the reason why they're opening. Well, I wish I could be there and I'll need to plan a trip when I come back. Maybe when I come back in August, we can, I can there come to California. We can do a delayed. Uh, it's going to be wicked cool. I'm just telling you. And uh, all the face characters are walking around. So every single one of the Avengers then in the, that uh, little grand opening they had yesterday, they had all the, 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 uh, characters out there and it was really it was awesome so so weird and when they you know when disney first bought marvel i was like so against it and now i'm like <laughs> totally on board exactly it, it's worked right. out right they know they are yeah, the masters of the universe when it comes to 
marketing and movie going and experiencing it through the park, right? So Yeah, exactly. I went to downtown Disney last week for the first time and it is fun to get out and to start doing things again. I got we're going to Sequoia for one day coming up in a week and a half and then we're gonna go to Kings Canyon and do some camping. So I feel like things are getting normal. It's awesome to get to see some national parks again. Cannot yeah. wait. All right. All right everyone, anything else, Shannon Brand? That's it. That's enough. All right. Day. Get out take there. Take the challenge. Take the challenge. Yeah, don't forget to take that June challenge. And get up, get out, and be forever wandering, but not.